everyone and welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we're drawing a T-Rex. Once again, large demand for the T-Rex and so here's the T-Rex's head. We're going to draw a nice big circle or more like an oval shape. This is where his head will be and then another big circle for his body and we're going to make this quite simple today. Um, so the idea is to understand how to draw it. I'm not making a masterpiece here. So there we go, two circles and then we'll draw where his arms will be. This is his forearm and another forearm over here. The T-Rex's arms are really, really tiny. So we're gonna make really small arms here and little tiny hands with three fingers on each hand here. There we go. So, um, by the way, this video is entirely in English and a French version exists on YouTube as well. So you'll have two videos, one in French, one in English. Alors, cette vidéo n'est qu'en anglais. Uh, la version française existe déjà sur ma chaîne YouTube. Allez visiter machine YouTube pour trouver la version française. All right, so we just erased the foundation lines here to the hands. And um, we're just going to draw the contours really quickly. <clears throat> and maybe some knuckles on the left and right hand here as well. There we go, very simple lines. I want to keep this as easy a drawing as ever. So there we go, a little line here. So we're going to start drawing the top of his head and the T-Rex has a really bony top here that looks like uh, little horns are coming out of each side. Um, and they're not ears, they're really made of bone. So it'll we'll curve over like this, and as it curves back up, uh, it's sort of where the eyebrows are, if, if a T-Rex had eyebrows. And then it curves in where the nostrils will be later on, a little bit lower. So sort of over here, and another one on the right side, another nostril about there. All right, then we can draw the contours of its face. and it's a very bony face, so lots of ridges and lines, and so we'll try to draw this along all the way down to his jawline, like this, and then curve over to his chin, like that, and then same thing on this side, a little bit bo more bonier here, because it's sort of profile, or three-quarter profile. Curve that across this way, <clears throat> there we go, and then of course, we can uh, erase those lines inside there and work on the little spikes he's got on the top of his head. These spikes are other bony ridges, some kind of protection against other dinosaurs, I suppose. And then he's got these little tiny eyes inside that head. Very, very tiny, just little circles. And I'm not concentrating too much on making detail here. So we're going to add in a little bit of shading. The shading will push those eyes back into the background and uh, will allow to, to create that idea of a recess. So the, the eyes look like they're, they're deeper within the head. All right, so the idea here is now to draw his mouth and we're gonna open it up like this, sort of like a really long S, see? The S is going like this and then curves back down. There we go. There's our little elongated S and we're gonna create the sort of same kind of shape at the bottom. But then all of a sudden it jots back right up zoop, like this and then the line at the top here sort of parallels the line at the bottom here. Just like that. And then we're going to curve it back up. Just like here. Alright, and then the favorite part of everybody, I mean uh, everybody's favorite part as far as uh, the T-Rex goes, the teeth. And so teeth are essentially just rounded out triangles. So we're going to draw these teeth and make them sort of menacing. And I would not like to be bitten by one of these guys, by one of these teeth, you know. Um, not that that's possible today, anyway. Um, this dinosaur luckily no longer exists, but in any way, shape, or form, I would not want to be bitten by a dog or a cat or anything. Sort of painful, right? Uh, but it's a lot of fun to draw. So we're going to put in these very, very pointed teeth and add some here to the bottom. But we're going to leave a little bit of a space between his upper lip here and the teeth so that the teeth sort of look like they're set within his uh, dentures or his gums, not his dentures. I don't think dinosaurs wore dentures back then. They didn't have dentists. <laughs> Alright, we're going to color in the underside of his eye here, make this nice and dark and make it even darker on the left side. What we're going to do oh, on the right side, pardon me, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that the light is coming from the left and all of the right side is going to be super dark. Okay, so we're going to color in this part really, really dark. And of course, the contour lines um, are going to be very jaggedy. I'm going to make the nostrils a little bit higher. I didn't like them 
they were a little bit too low. So that's what I just erased. I erased this, those two nostril lines and I'm going to make them a little bit higher. Um, yeah, a little bit farther from the lip there. We'll create sort of a nose line here. Make that a little bit darker. And then we're going to add the darkness within his mouth to start putting in some uh, contrast here. So we're going to color the whole thing in. I'm speeding this up, so you can hit the pause button if you like and to catch up. And then we're going to create the like a, a tongue line here, so a long elongated V, a stretched open V here, and then the top part will be black because the bottom area is sort of his tongue. So we can sort of see that in there. And then we're going to create these jaggedy lines, which will reproduce sort of the thickness to his lip, and it's sort of like very rugged, crocodile-y um, texture. So think of a croc or an alligator, and, and that's what you have to have in your mind when you're tracing this uh, or drawing this uh, T-Rex. There we go. All right, and color a little bit of a piece in here. Make that reset. And then add some shading here to the top of the teeth. The light coming from the top can't reach this side of the teeth, so we're going to color that in. All right, and the same thing here, a little bit of shading to give a little bit of a 3D effect to the lower lip, or the bottom part of the top, upper lip. OK, let's erase that. Uh, I didn't like the, the chin so much, so we're going to retrace the chin in there. And you know what? It's all right to erase. A lot of people are saying, you know, you shouldn't, if you're good, you shouldn't erase. And whatever, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's your drawing, and so if you don't like something, just erase it. And that's why it's vital to draw as lightly as possible on your pencil at first, and then you apply a lot more weight on your pencil to draw the outline. Okay, like I'm doing now, I, I like these lines, and so I traced around my uh, dinosaur head a lot darker. And because the light is coming from the top here, and, and this side will be shaded, uh, we're gonna now color in the whole right side of his face. Um, to help you out with shading, I just uh, published a new book. It's called, it's called Drawing Like Paolo, Light and Dark, uh, Learning to Shade Your Drawings. And it's available for iPad and for your Mac uh, on the iBook store today. And you have to have an iPad. I'm sorry for those of you that don't have an iPad or a Mac. They're really made for Apple products, my books. I have two out now. And uh, I make them rather inexpensive. You know, I, I, I do charge because... I have to sort of be able to buy my equipment and all this stuff. So, uh, but they're very inexpensive. It's all it's around four dollars or four euro, depending on where you live. Uh, it's around that price, so it's not very expensive. And because Christmas or the holidays are coming around soon, at the filming of this video, you can always ask for that book. And uh, yeah, you get to learn how to shade your stuff. There's video and animation, so it's not a, a regular book where you just turn the pages. You get to turn the pages and you get to watch really cool content at the same time. So let's add some texture to our uh, T-Rex here. We're gonna add um, sort of like ovals, and the ovals represent uh, the skin texture uh, to this, uh, this huge animal. And we're gonna speed that up a little bit. And so these ovals represent his sort of uh, unsmooth skin. And then we're gonna shade a portion of these ovals just to give that 3D effect a little bit there. And we're going to have to do that throughout his whole body. Yes, I am preparing you in advance <laughs> for a uh, long ride here with having to uh, draw in circles everywhere. But we're going to have fun doing it. That's important. An important piece of drawing is to have fun while you're doing it. All right. You know, why would you draw otherwise? And I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to draw. You don't. Maybe if you don't know how to draw, you can learn. I'm pretty sure everybody can learn how to draw. All you need is the proper tools to help you out, and that's why I make these videos. Because <clears throat> I believe anyone can learn how to draw. All right, adding these little ovals in here. Now these videos are meant to be a guide to teach you how to draw. I mean, I'm not making masterpieces here. The whole point is to give you a good idea of how we can do this really quickly and having a lot of fun doing it, and then to show your, your drawings to your friends and all that. So we're going to color in a little bit darker here. And let's work on the chin area. So this part here will be where the light is. So, we're, However, underneath this piece here, it'll be all nice and dark. So once again, if the light's coming from the top left, this whole right side here will be nice and dark. And we need to produce what we call a gradient. A gradient is 
a transition between a dark tone to a light tone with the pencil. So as you're coloring along, you're applying less and less pressure. So very dark on the left side, uh, on the right side, and as you move towards the left side, you're making it lighter and lighter. And that's what a gradient is. As you can see here, this side here is dark, and as I move towards the right, I'm making it lighter and lighter as we go on. And I'm creating a gradient. And that gradient gives the idea of uh, realism to that dinosaur. Very dark on the right side. And here we're going to retrace the thickness to his lip and add curved lines here to give that idea of a uh, volume. Color this part in here a little bit. And then we're going to add a little bit of darkness here. Uh, but let's add some of those uh, details to skin details. Uh, this sort of reminds me of when we drew the Cobra a few months back. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Cobra, it's really great practice for this video. So you can go check out the Cobra video, which is available on my YouTube channel. The best place to view all my videos is on my YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, this skin pattern is a lot like the Cobra skin pattern. What we're going to do here is shade the right side of every one of those little ovals. And it's not that difficult, really, to make it look really cool. All right, let's add more texture to the, those lips. Those beautiful dinosaur lips. Needs a little bit of chapstick. <laughs> All right, we're going to work on the body now. So we're going to add a little bit of a leg here on the left side. So there's his thigh, and then we're going to add like a knee over here, so his leg is bent, so another little curve here, and that goes into a foot, <clears throat> and here's his belly, and here's the bottom of his foot going down off the page. So okay, while I'm drawing this stuff, I have a question for you guys. Is it okay to not have your animal fit the full page of your drawing? All right, so, so do you guys have an answer? Here's the question again. Is it okay for your character to come off the page or not to fit your page or to be cropped off the page while you're drawing. See, like in the case of my dinosaur, you can see that he does not fit my page. Is that all right? So I want to hear some answers out there. All right, some are saying yes, some are saying no. It doesn't really matter. You know, here's a great example. When you're taking a picture, do you make sure that the person's entire body, as you're taking that person's picture, fits your camera lens. Well, no, it doesn't matter. Sometimes the person's legs are off the photo, or sometimes they're fully in there, or sometimes their left arm is coming out, especially if you're taking a picture of a group of individuals. So it doesn't really matter uh, that they don't fully fit the, the, their whole body fits the page. See, as in this case, my dinosaur is coming, coming off the page, and that's quite all right. Uh, it really depends how you want to crop your, your image. So don't worry about that as you're drawing. It doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm going to color the whole right side here of my dinosaur, which will give a nice uh, shaded reflection, uh, shaded uh, texture to this uh, dinosaur. And we're going to add some skin texture here. So I'm not drawing little smooth lines. I really want this to look lumpy and bumpy. And that's what the dinosaur skin is like. Well, anyway, that's what they still say today. They say. Uh, that either they had like the crocodile skin, but some scientists are saying that they probably had feathers as a a uh, real texture. So birds would be the ancestors, or rather, uh, dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds, and that's why birds have feathers, just like dinosaurs probably had. But I don't know that. I wasn't there back then. Were you there back then? If you if you were there back then, then hey, I'd like to hear your point of view of how it was to be living with dinosaurs around. All right, so we're going to color in this arm here on this side, make it nice and dark on the right side here, and then add a little bit of a skin fold here, make it nice and bumpy. I don't want to pet a T-Rex. That's that's not in my uh, my plans. I'm going to color in the belly over here. The belly has to be nice and black, as it, the light does not reach this section of his body. His belly portion under there. Okay, fill that in, and then I just noticed that uh, my drawing no longer uh, fits in the frame, so I may have to reframe this so we can get a little bit more detail on my dinosaur. Uh, I'll do that in a few seconds. But uh, let's trace out the outline of his leg here, and uh, color in this side of the leg, make it nice and dark between his fingers, 
and add a little bit more thickness to his uh, skin fold here. Bring that down a little bit farther. All right, and you know what? There's something I need to tell you guys about. Um, some people have been leaving me great messages about how my drawings are awesome and all that, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And some people are telling me that my drawings suck. And that's okay, too. Uh, Everybody is allowed to their opinion. However, what's important for you is if people tell you that your drawings are awesome or that your drawings suck, well, it's important for you to tell them why. Uh, ask them, why does it suck? Why does my drawing suck? Ask them, why is my drawing awesome? And the reason is you need to learn from your drawings, and you can learn from others, but they must give you the reason to why they're giving you that comment. If they tell you, hey, your drawing sucks, your answer should be, Okay, why? Why does it suck? If they can't tell you, then don't even care about what their comment was. If they say it sucks, but they can't tell you why, then it doesn't really suck. They just want to make you angry or something, or they're jealous of your drawing or whatever else. So if they tell you, hey, your drawing sucks, ask them why it sucks. And if they can give you some comments, then take them, um, you know, and put them aside because they're important. If they're real comments that mean something, then put them aside and learn from them. Um, these lines, by the way, are curved lines. You shouldn't really have them on your dinosaur, but they're to show you how you can actually uh, follow the body pattern to add some texture to your skin here. So th these skin ovals will go along and follow this corridor, and then I need to curve them along. And so it gives uh, a better idea of 3D volume to that character, to, in this case, to this dinosaur. See how the ovals are going all the way around his body to make it look like um, it looks more 3D. So I just want to finish on this subject of people giving you uh, feedback about your drawing. So once again, if somebody gives you some negative feedback, great, take it. If they're giving you feedback, it's because for some reason they care and they want, they want you to learn from the feedback. So ask them, okay, if my drawing stinks, then tell me why. And if they tell you, then you can learn from that. You know, Take it with a grain of salt and maybe next time rework your drawing. If they tell you, hey, your drawing is amazing, once again, ask them why. Why is my drawing amazing? Here we go, I've rearranged the camera uh, while I'm talking here so that you can see the full drawing, full extent. So if my drawing is amazing, why is it amazing? And the reason why you ask why is it so that you can repeat the good stuff, and if it's bad, then don't reproduce it. Um, people just can't give you one word sentences of, of well, it's not even a sentence, of one word about your drawing. So they must give you more uh, detail about their comments and uh, so that you can learn from them, all right? So I'm accelerating here through the uh, adding texture to this dinosaur. Uh, you guys pretty much know how to do it at this point. So that's all we need to do for the for a lot of this. Add circles everywhere on this guy, and then we're going to shade uh, one half of those circles, the whole right side. We're going to add some to his hands here, paws or whatever we call these, his hooks, and his right side too, just like that and color in the right side here. So every one of those little circles, what we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, shading, sort of like this. So for each of those ovals, we're going to add a little bit of shading on the right side and leave the left side bright. So it looks like we're giving a little bit of a texture to that uh, skin pattern. All right, so the tail back there is really just to look like it's in movement. It's sort of blurry, not too much detail. And same thing for this leg. It's in motion a little bit, so we're just going to add a few lines across. And a little bit of shading at the bottom. Same thing for the uh, right leg here, so we're going to add those same lines across. And then uh, color in the, left, uh, the right side here. I keep mixing up my left and my right. What's going on? There we go. Nice and dark along that line. and Shade this part in here. And then color in the knee. Now I want to leave a nice reflection on that knee. And the whole reason why there's a little bit of a bright spot is I've decided that there'd be light shining on his knee. Now you don't have to. You can color his whole knee black if you wanted to. In your drawing, you can do that. In my drawing, I want to add a little brightness here. So that's okay. You do what you want with your drawing, and I'll do what I want with mine. That's, that's the beauty of drawings. I can invent whatever I want in my drawings, be it realistic or not. I could even put some uh, four horns on my, my T-Rex here if I wanted to. And I know people would probably be discontented with that, but you know what? I don't really mind because I do what I want to do in my drawings. And that's what's cool about drawing. It's your imagination. Nowhere else can you do something like that. You can't tell, you know, your parents, hey, I'm going to go to bed at 
2 o'clock this morning if you're young or, or uh, you know, I, I'm going to jump off this building and I can fly. That does not make sense in real life. But in drawing, you can do whatever you want. You can draw yourself flying. You can draw yourself doing anything you like. Or you can draw whatever you like. And that's the beauty of drawing. Full um, creativity. Draw whatever you want. And really cool painters you can check out for that kind of thing is uh, René Magritte, Magritte and Salvador Dali. These guys are full-on imagination. They do whatever they want. And people thought they were crazy. But, you know, that's all right. That's the whole point to art and to drawing. All right, so that tail is very, very loosely drawn, not very much detail, which is a lot of fun sometimes to just be loose and make this sort of sketchy drawing. Add a bit more... Uh, shading to that knee. And this drawing is coming along pretty well. Alright, make this a little bit darker. So now we're just adding a little bit of contract, uh, contrast to this drawing and making the darker parts darker, making the lighter parts, you know, maybe using eraser sometimes. I won't in this case, but we're just going to color some stuff in. And now we're going to add the background. So I'm going to add a few mountains and a few trees and a little bit of grass, but you can do the background you like. I'm going to keep this very, very sketchy. And it's up to you to draw what you ever you like. So for those of you out there that wanted a dinosaur or a T-Rex, here's my version of a T-Rex. I hope you enjoyed it. You can take this T-Rex and make it your own. And uh, I hope you uh, like to share your drawing with me. You can uh, join me on uh, Facebook, Drawing Like Paolo, or Drawing with Paolo, pardon me, Drawing with Paolo on Facebook.com. And uh, you can uh, share your drawings there as I share mine. And it's a really cool community to join. So there you have it, guys. T-Rex fully running down the hill, coming right at you. I he sort of looks hungry. Last thing we're going to do here is color in some uh, mountains back here. Add a little bit of snow on top of those peaks. And fill that in with a nice gray tone. Not too dark because I don't want my dinosaur to disappear in the background there. So add a little bit of a shadow there. And there we go, T-Rex in about 20 minutes or so. So fill that in. One last part, my signature. Guys, thanks for being here every week. Love you out there. See you soon on another episode of Drawing with Paolo.